Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers state capital security, obstruction, and special needs searches, and is brought to us by Auditing America's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Raycon. Raycon's everyday earbuds are my go-to earbuds for any occasion, whether it's going to the gym or being productive in the office. Thanks to Raycon's optimized gel tips, they have the perfect in-ear fit and won't fall out no matter what you're doing. You can enjoy up to eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of total battery life, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and booming bass for a fraction of the cost of other premium audio brands. No wonder Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews. Raycon earbuds also offer a ton of features to enhance your listening experience, such as tap functions and awareness mode. Raycon is so confident that you'll love their earbuds that they offer a 30-day free return policy so that you have absolutely nothing to lose. Click on the link in my description or go to buyraycon.com audit to get 15 percent off your order and choose the color that fits your style. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this episode. In a video posted on August 5th, 2022, two First Amendment auditors attempted to enter the Georgia State Capitol building in Atlanta, Georgia. When Trooper Frazier of the Capitol Police Division of the Georgia Department of Public Safety, who was working at the security desk at the building's entrance, requested their identification, the auditors began to film the interaction. Why would you need my ID? Wow. Yes. Do, do you know what facility that you stepped into? Absolutely. All right, this is the Georgia Capitol building where they house the senator, the governor, the house representative, and it's ran by the troopers. So upon demand of your drop like that, stated by the OCGA code, you produce it. You don't question it. What you about, clear. what now about? Now by five seconds about banning you from this building and you would never come back here. For asking a Let question? Let me see your driver license or your ID Am I so I can scan it before you come across here. Well, the thing is, I don't have it with me, sir. Okay. That's why I'm asking Stand you. Stand over what... here. Is Stand it... over here but, right hold, now. Hold on, but give... Sir, I'm telling you right now, I'm giving you an order. Have I, have I broken Stand the law? Here. Yes, you are. You're breaking it right now. You are what? in the state building. Okay. Keep holding this line right now until you're crossing it with an ID. I'm not crossing. I'm right here. Right here. Okay, but Thank you... you. Sir, you have to be nice. You don't have to t talk to me yes, like I'm a criminal. I'm, yes, not a, I'm not a criminal. Why are you treating, treating no, me like that? Because you're not listening. When I take you to do something... You don't question it. Move. Before Sir, you, what about what about our rights? You don't have the right to walk in this building. Yeah, we but, do. But listen, without following the rules. Well, the thing is, I already checked the rules, sir. No, That's, no, you didn't. I don't mean to be rude to you in any way, officer, but I've been to a, at least 30 state capitol buildings in the past, and this is the first one this that I get. This is and we take it seriously. What about the Fourth Amendment? Do you take it seriously? Yes, we do. As long as I'm working this station right here, I'm going to need some passports, identification, and so forth. Trooper Frazier claims that it is against Georgia law to enter the state capitol building without identification. The Georgia State Capitol Building is under the control of the Georgia Building Authority, which manages nearly 8 million square feet of state properties, including 32 buildings and more than 30 other properties. Section 35-2-121 of the Georgia Code created and established a division of the Georgia Department of Public Safety known as the Capitol Police Division. The statute states that the Department of Public Safety must staff this division with certified law enforcement officers who will serve as designated Capitol Police officers. Under Section 50-6 16-14 of the Georgia Code, quote, Certified law enforcement officers of the Department of Public Safety are authorized and empowered to deny the entrance of any person into or upon any property or building of the Georgia Building Authority when the person's activities are intended to disrupt or interfere with the normal activities and functions carried on in such property or building, or have the potential of violating the security of the personnel therein. Likewise, the statute also authorizes and empowers officers, quote, to remove any person person from any such property or building when the person's activities interfere with or disrupt the activities and the operations carried on in such property or building, or constitute a safety hazard to the property or building or the inhabitants thereof. The Department of Public Safety's website states the quote, The Georgia State Patrol Troopers of Post 50 control the access into the state capitol by checking all state employees, guests, and other personnel for valid
valid identification. They provide security for all elected officials, state employees, and guests at the state capitol. According to the state capitol's website, the Georgia Capitol is open to the public Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and, quote, all adults aged 18 and older must show a photo ID upon entering the capitol. The website also notes that, quote, in compliance with security regulations, visitors must enter the capitol through a metal detector. The x-ray machine must examine hand-carried items. Here, it appears that Trooper Frazier is a member of the Georgia Capitol Police Division, who has been tasked with controlling access to the state capitol building. While there is no specific statute that requires an individual to show identification to enter the capitol building, there is clearly an established security procedure that requires visitors to provide their identification. We will discuss the constitutionality of this policy later in this episode, but based on Georgia law alone, it is likely that a court would conclude Trooper Frazier had the authority to require the auditors to show identification to enter the state capitol, and to deny them entry when they refuse to do so. Did you take a sacred oath to uphold the Constitution, sir? So, oh, so this, this is what this is all about? Are you, are you trying to... We're trying to walk freely. Oh, no, 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 no. I did not, because you recorded me. You come over here, okay, I gave you instructions. Don't question the instructions, just do what you're told to do. We have the, we, to do. Sir, we have listen, the right to listen. question. Right now, I'm about to have some people come in. I'm going to need you to step to the side. Sure, we won't interfere here. Now, now, do you see how easy that is, man? Sir, I just wait on the proper person to come here. No problem. Because right? I would love to show them uh, your the way that you greeted oh, us. Okay, that's fine. And by the way, sir, by the way, sir, there's... stop talking to me. No, no, sir, that's not how it works. Okay. We were nothing but courteous and professional as soon as we got here, and he said, you do not... Do not question my authority. We're just waiting for a supervisor. Is he coming? Right, you, but you, you got to step right over here, sir. You're giving us lawful orders, and if we don't, what happens? Right. You know what I'm gonna oh. do? You know what I'm gonna step over there? Because don't you touch me. I'm not. Okay, but don't you touch me. Don't you touch All right. me. Stay right here. All right. Trooper Frazier orders the auditors to step outside the security entrance, and when they ask, he claims it is a, quote, lawful order. As mentioned earlier, Section 50-16-14 of the Georgia Code authorizes certified law enforcement officers of the Department of Public Safety to deny entrance to the Capitol building to an individual who has the potential to violate the security of building personnel. Additionally, according to Section 50-9-9 of the Georgia Code, quote, certified law enforcement officers employed by the Department of Public Safety shall exercise such powers and duties as are authorized by law to keep watch over and protect the property of the authority in that area designated as Capitol Square. Likewise, Section 35-2-122 of the Georgia Code states that the Capitol Police Division has, quote, the primary duty to enforce all laws in Capitol Square and the property and buildings owned by the Georgia Building Authority within a five-mile radius of Capitol Square, and its additional duties include, quote, to maintain peace and order and enforce the laws and regulations relating to controlling access to any building or property under the control or operation of the Georgia Building Authority, and, quote, to maintain peace and order and enforce the laws and regulations relating to controlling access to Capitol Square. Although there is limited case law interpreting the scope of the Capitol Police Division's jurisdiction, given the broad statutory authority granted to the troopers to protect and control access to the Capitol Building, it is certainly possible that a court would determine that Trooper Frazier could order the auditors to wait for a supervisor on the other side of the security entrance. Under Section 50-16-16 of the Georgia Code, quote, any person who refuses to obey any lawful order of any security personnel or law enforcement officer issued pursuant to Code Section 50-16-14, or any person who refuses to vacate any such property or building when requested to do so, shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. Similarly, Section 16-10-24 of the Georgia Code states that, quote, a person who knowingly and willfully obstructs or hinders any law enforcement enforcement officer in the lawful discharge of his or her official duties shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. In the 1978 case of Edmonds versus City of Albany, the Supreme Court of Georgia held that the, quote, willful failure or refusal to comply with a lawful order or direction of a police officer constituted a violation of a prior and near identical version of this statute, which stated that, quote, any person who knowingly and willfully obstructs or hinders any law enforcement officer in the lawful discharge of his official duties is guilty of a misdemeanor. Therefore, it is likely that if a court determined that Trooper Frazier was within his lawful authority to order the auditors to wait on the other side of the security entrance, it would also conclude that they could be convicted of obstruction if they refused to do so. Sir, with all due respect, 
You're a dangerous one. And by the way, we have a hundred million views on the internet, punk. Hi, gentlemen. How are you? Good. So we were trying to, to get in uh, to the state house, and uh, my friend doesn't have an ID. Gentlemen started barking orders at us, so we just politely asked for a supervisor. Okay. Don't our Fourth Amendment rights trump any policy? Don't, doesn't your oath to the Constitution to uphold our our So you don't oath? think that you could be searched to enter a, a government building? Well, well search a people's building. It's it's just it's just like any any other building. I mean, if I go to your house. if I go to your that's different. Why to enter this building? You have to show an identification, okay? okay? If you do not have an identification, you cannot enter the building. If you provide them a name and date of birth and they're able to, able to positively ID you, that's who you say you are, then we allow you to enter, okay? okay? So that's that's it. The last thing I would say to you, sir, and with the utmost respect, not only the Fourth Amendment, but the supremacy clause of the Constitution gives us the right. Over here, they can make any policy, but if that violates, there's the last thing I'll say, if it violates our rights, okay. it is your duty to disobey that order, sir. No, it, that's not... I understand so what you're you saying. So you took an oath when you graduated. Listen, I you know what you said. If you want to enter the building, okay. you can show an ID. If you don't want to enter the building, you're not going to be allowed All right, well, so can you, that, okay? okay, but can you at least answer what he said? The auditors claim that the Fourth Amendment and the so-called Supremacy Clause of the U.S. Constitution both require the sergeant to disobey the policy requiring individuals to identify themselves in order to enter the Capitol building. The Supremacy Clause is found in Article 6, Paragraph 2 of the U.S. Constitution and states that, quote, This Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby, anything in the Constitution or laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. In general, this clause means that the federal Constitution and other federal laws take precedence over state laws, and as the Supreme Court held in the landmark 1803 case of Marbury v. Madison, it authorizes the practice of so-called judicial review, allowing courts to strike down laws that they determine to violate the Constitution. While the Fourth Amendment does protect, quote, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures, it does not guarantee citizens the right to avoid any searches or seizures that are not supported by reasonable suspicion or probable cause. Rather, the Fourth Amendment only protects against searches and seizures that are deemed unreasonable under the law. As the Supreme Court summarized in the 1997 case of Chandler v. Miller, quote, to be reasonable under the Fourth Amendment, a search ordinarily must be based on individualized suspicion of wrongdoing, but particularized exceptions to the main rule are sometimes warranted based on special needs beyond the normal need for law enforcement. The court further explained that, quote, when such special needs, concerns other than crime detection, are alleged in justification of a Fourth Amendment intrusion, courts must undertake a context-specific inquiry, examining close the competing private and public interests advanced by the parties. In limited circumstances, where the privacy interests implicated by the search are minimal, and where an important governmental interest furthered by the intrusion would be placed in jeopardy by a requirement of individualized suspicion, a search may be reasonable despite the absence of such suspicion. The Supreme Court explored this exception further in the 2000 case of City of Indianapolis v. Edmond, where it determined that although the court had previously upheld, quote, brief, suspicionless seizures of motorists at a fixed border patrol checkpoint designed to intercept illegal aliens and at a sobriety checkpoint aimed at removing drunk drivers from the road, a similar so-called narcotics detection checkpoint violated the Fourth Amendment because its, quote, primary purpose was to detect evidence of ordinary criminal wrongdoing and was, quote, ultimately indistinguishable from the general interest in crime control. However, in reaching this decision, the court clarified that, quote, our holding does not affect the validity of border searches or searches at places like airports and government buildings, where the need for such measures to ensure public safety can be particularly acute. Given this precedent, it is likely that a court would conclude that the requirement that an individual show identification as part of a security screening process to be granted entry to the Georgia Capitol building does not violate the Fourth Amendment, and therefore the Supremacy Clause would not cause the policy to be supplanted by the Constitution. If you want to enter the building, show an ID. If you don't, you can walk away. All right. Do, simple enough. I'm, I'm not Just last question. Do you know what the Third Amendment is? I'm not talking to y'all anymore, okay? Do you know briefly what it's about? Tell us about it. Sir, I'm not required to know it. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to sit here and entertain you. What about my Fourth Amendment? You have a Fourth Amendment. No, I know. Not in, the public, not in a public place? 
Apparently, no. You're, you're, you want my ID without without me committing a crime. There's no reasonable, okay. articulable suspicion that I've no, committed I, a crime. Nobody said you committed a crime. So there's no crime, no ID. What about my what Listen, about my, my private argue, documents? I, After their conversation with the sergeants, the auditors decided to identify themselves in order to be admitted to the Capitol building and return to the security desk. After they provided their information to Trooper Frazier and he completed his security checks, he advised the auditors that they were free to enter the building. It is unclear whether the auditors intend to take any further action regarding the incident. Overall, Trooper Frazier gets a C-, because although he was likely within his authority to demand the auditor's identification as part of the security screening process for the Georgia Capitol building, he displayed a hostile and aggressive demeanor throughout the encounter, and barked orders at the auditors instead of attempting to engage in productive communication. Now, while I understand Trooper Frazier's frustration and appreciate his commitment to the security process, it is imperative that officers behave professionally and respectfully when faced with challenging situations and individuals. Trooper Frazier also struggled to articulate the legal principles that authorized him to identify the auditors, and misrepresented the law on several occasions, such as when he claimed that state law required individuals to carry identification at all times, and that the law did not allow individuals to question a police officer's orders. In general, Trooper Frazier could certainly benefit from additional training, both on professionalism and the limits of his legal authority. The auditors also get a C-, because while they maintained a polite and respectful demeanor for most of the interaction, they also demonstrated a fundamental misunderstanding of the limits of the Fourth Amendment's protections, and refused to recognize the officer's legal authority to maintain the security of the Capitol building and protect the government officials working inside it. The auditors repeatedly claim that they should be granted unfettered access to the Capitol because it was the so-called People's Building. But the Georgia Capitol also houses the offices of the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and Secretary of State, as well as the State Senate and House of Representatives. It is more than reasonable for the Capitol Police to screen the identities of the individuals who entered the building where these important government officials work. And as the events of January 6, 2021 demonstrate, security for these types of government buildings is something that should be taken seriously. While I admire the auditor's desire to fight against government overreach and champion constitutional rights, I would encourage them to devote some time to studying and understanding the legal principles they were seeking to extol before conducting further audits. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content. Thank you.